Hey, in this video, we're going to look at rate law. We're going to explore how concentration affects reaction rate. Now, there's three different rate orders. There's zeroth order, first order, and second order. And there are three different mathematical relationships for how the concentration affects the rate. So, in other words, how much of a substance you have or how much of a reactant you have, how does that affect how quickly the reaction is taking place? I'm going to take you through each reaction order and look at the math of it as well as some of the theory behind it. So we'll start with the zeroth order for this first one. So let's say that we have a reaction like this. A plus B gives you AB. So two reactants reacting together and they give you this product. And we're gonna look at reactant A here and see how does reactant A's concentration affect the rate at which this reaction takes place. We could do the same thing for B later on, but we'll just focus on, on A or one reactant in each case here. So for zeroth order, here's what that means. It means that the rate equals K times the concentration to the power of zero, hence zeroth order. Now, if you raise something to the power of zero, it just becomes one. Anything to the power of zero is one. So you'll notice on here that this will simplify into rate equals K. And K is just a constant. We call it the rate constant. And the K is going to depend on the reaction itself, what reaction are we looking at, and the temperature. So this reaction of A plus B gives you AB, um, whatever that reaction is, it could be hydrochloric acid plus magnesium producing um, you know, hydrogen gas, whatever. It, what, for this particular reaction, at a particular temperature, K will always be a constant for the reaction. So in this case, the, the amount of A doesn't matter. If you have a lot of A or a little bit of A, this reaction is going to take place at the same rate. Now, B, maybe it matters, the concentration, but for A, it doesn't if it's zeroth order. So let's look at this graph on the bottom left here. What would it look like if the, the concentration over time, if the rate never changed? Well, if the rate never changed, that's going to be a linear relationship. In other words, for example, in let's say this first second here, the concentration is going to change by a certain amount. Well, in the second second, it's going to change by the same amount. And the third second is going to change by the same amount. In other words, the amount that we're starting with at any given point, the rate at which that reactant is going to decrease or be used up or consumed is not affected by how much you had to start with during that second. In other words, the rate doesn't depend on the concentration in a zeroth order reaction. Also, one thing to point out in here is that the value of K, that rate constant, is actually equal to the slope or technically the opposite of the slope. If the slope's negative, the k is always going to be a positive value. So if you have a graph, you can always just find the slope of that graph to tell you the rate constant k. That's another way to find k. Now let's take a look at a table of data here. Let's say that we had three different concentrations of A, 0.5, 1, and 2 molar. And let's look at what would the rate be, or how would the rate be affected by these different concentrations. So let's say that the rate at 0.5 molar is um, 1.41. And so we, maybe we measured that um, somehow in the lab. And we said, it's, okay, 1.41 molar per second is the rate of that reaction. 1.41 molar of A is being used up per second. That's how much the concentration is changing per second. Well, if we were to double the concentration, now we have a concentration of one molar, what would happen to our rate? Well, if the rate doesn't depend on concentration, the rate's gonna be the same. And if we change it to two molar, the rate's going to be the same. Notice it says 1.41 and 1.42 and 1.41, and you might be tempted to say, oh, the rate did change. But really, if we, ex if we did the exact same experiment multiple times in a row, there'd be a little bit of uncertainty there. Um, and so I put that in there just for, just for that. It doesn't have to be exactly, exactly the same in a measurement, but it'll be almost exactly the same if it's zeroth order. All right, so that's zeroth order. Rate doesn't depend on the concentration. Now let's take a look at first order. And in a first order reaction means that rate equals K times concentration to the power of one, hence first order. You notice here that the rate equals K times the concentration. In other words, the one exponent, we, can, we don't have to write that. In this case, the rate does depend on the concentration. A first order reaction or a linear relationship like this is going to mean that if you had twice as much reactant, twice as much A, the reaction would go twice as fast. And based on kinetic molecular theory, that should make a lot of sense. If you had double the number of particles, there's going to be more collisions, double the collisions probably, and the rate would be twice as fast. So this one I think is the most intuitive of the three reaction orders. 
I think it's also the most common. Now, if you look at the graph of concentration versus time, it's going to look something like this, where at first you'll see a steep decline. That's because if you start with more right here, well, if you have more, then there's more that it can decrease by in that first second. But down here, you have less concentration. Well, so it's not going to decrease by as much. And so this is what the graph of concentration versus time will look like. It won't be linear. It, the change will be greater at the beginning when you have more concentration. So it'll look like this curve here. Let's look at a table of data now. Let's say that we had, I'll, I'll go with 0.1 molar, 0.2 molar, and 0.3 molar as our concentrations. Let's see what the rate would be at any of those given concentrations. Let's go with 1.4, um, similar to the last example for 0.1 molar. But now if we had twice the concentration, this reaction would be taking place twice as fast. So the reaction rate would be around 2.8 molar per second. Or if we had 0.3, well, we would just follow that linear trend there, and it would be point, or sorry, 4.2 molar per second would be the rate um, of that reaction. In other words, the more concentration you have, the faster the reaction's going, and it's a linear relationship. So if you had twice as much concentration, like 0.2 compared to 0.1, the rate would be twice as fast. Over on the right, you'll notice I have another graph. In this case, where it's a graph of the natural log of concentration versus time. In a first order reaction, instead of plotting the concentration versus time, if we took all of these data, we took the 0.1 and instead did a mathematical operation to it, and we took the natural log of 0.1 and the natural log of 0.2 and the natural log of 0.3 and plotted those values over time, instead of 0.1, 0.2, and 0.3 over time, we plotted natural log of 0.1, natural log of 0.2, natural log of 0.3 versus time. Instead of getting this curved graph over here, we're actually going to get a linear graph again. And that's unique to first order reactions. To explain why that is, we'd have to get into some calculus and stuff that we don't need to know for AP chemistry right now. But we need to know that the natural log of concentration versus time, if that graph is linear, that means it has to be a first order reaction. So you can look for those graphs. It's a fact to know about um, first order reactions. And if we found the slope of that natural log versus time graph, it's going to be the opposite of the rate constant. So the slope here is going to be negative. If we just change that to a positive, that gives us the value of k. Very similarly to the concentration versus time graph in zeroth order gave us that k value. So another way to find k in this case for a first order reaction is to find the slope and the natural log of concentration versus time. Okay, next let's take a look at a second order reaction. And this is going to be a quadratic relationship. So let's write out a rate law. The rate equals K times concentration squared. There's no simplification there, just rate equals K times concentration squared. And that's a it's a quadratic relationship, which means that if you were to double the value of A, the double double the concentration, the rate here would actually quadruple. So if you doubled the A, the rate would be four times greater. So a huge effect on the rate based on the concentration. So let's take a look at the graph of this. Notice that the graph of concentration versus time basically is the same as it was for first order, which is why we need these other linear graphs like the one I showed you on first order. We won't be able to tell based on just this graph alone of concentration versus time if it's first or second order. We can't distinguish between the two, which is why we need to look at that other graph that I showed you. In other words, the more concentration we have, the faster that concentration will be changing, just like first order, but it's a little bit more dramatic. Let's look at a table of data now. Um, I'm going to give some data here, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.4 here. And let's say the rate, if the concentration were 0.1, is 0.3. I just made those up just so we can see the trend here. Okay, well, if I double the concentration from 0.1 to 0.2, this value here, I have to multiply by a factor of 4. So I would multiply that by 4, and we would get... 1.2 molar per second. And if I were to double that again, double the concentration from 0.2 to 0.4, well, we would just take that rate and again multiply it by a factor of 4. In first order, we multiply by a factor of 2. We doubled it. Whenever we doubled the concentration, we doubled the rate. But here, whenever we double the concentration, we would quadruple the rate because it's quadratic. So here we would have a reaction rate of 4.8 molar per second. Now we have another linear graph. In this case, it's not natural log. It's 1 over concentration. So instead of plotting 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.4 versus whatever time we were at in the reaction, instead we plotted 1 over 0.1, 1 over 0.2, and 1 over 0.4, we would end up getting 
a linear graph like this, and it has a positive slope. So in this case, the value of k is just the slope of that um, graph. And so those are facts to memorize for the three reaction orders, that concentration versus time is linear for zeroth order, natural log of concentration versus time is linear for first order, and one over concentration is linear for second order. And to go back as a recap to this in zeroth order, the rate did not depend on concentration. The rate was going to be the same regardless of how much of that reactant we had. In first order, the more reactant we had, the faster the rate at that given time. And that was a linear relationship. In other words, if you had twice as much reactant at a given time, the rate would be happening twice as fast. And finally, here with second order, reaction has a huge impact, a quadratic impact on the rate. So if you had twice as much concentration at one point in time, then the reaction rate would be four times as much. All right, so these are the three rate orders. These are the three rate orders, zeroth, first, and second. And then these rate equations were what we call the rate laws, the rate law for each of these three orders. All right, hopefully that was helpful, and I'll see you next time.